Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Butter What Show. This is my co-host, Brian C. Moses. I'm Pat Regan, and we're going to talk about solid-state SSD caching of your uh, slow, slow, big honking hard drives. Tubby, what do you think of that? I, I think it's promising, hopefully. Well, my experiences have been all right. I've been using LVM cache on my Linux server, my little KVM host over my virtual machine server over here for golly six years now probably okay and that's a small cache i have 120 gig ssd which was like 100 bucks at the time in front of you know a raid 10 of some number of drives Barely. That's, that's a sata ssd right that's a sata ssd it's not it's actually it's, two in a mirror so one yeah. can fail you have to be safe ish yep. right if if you use an ssd cache, lvm cache can be done in right back or right through mode in right through, everything is always flushed to the disk as quickly as possible. And only reads are, mostly reads are cached, right? Okay. But with right back, I use right back cache. Stuff, data can sit in the, on the SSD for days, weeks, hours, whatever, depends on how you configure it. Oh, wow. And if that okay. SSD fails, then that right. Everything's going to, your whole disk yep. is going to be in big trouble. Things are oh, going to be geez. bad. So be, be safe. You're already making me nervous. My anxiety's increased. <laughs> but I decided to try this on my desktop this time since I rebuilt. I put I upgraded from, I was running out of SSD space and my second SSD was starting to fail. Acting weird. It's still working. I don't know what it's really doing, but every now and then it would just drop off the bus. So it, it was scary. But there were only Steam games on there, so it wasn't too scary. But... I had to do something, right? Because I didn't have, I didn't have more. I was running out of room anyway, so I picked up Build a one ass. terabyte NVMe and I set aside about three hundred gig to use this LVM cache on my desktop, and I snuck in one of your old four terabyte hard drives in there. Very old drive. It's scary. That's the scariest. It's, it's a scary. It's a scary old drive. That was that was out of my, that was out of my DIY NAS. That went back there, like. And been, it's been sitting on a shelf for probably a year. Do you know what's even years? scarier, Tubby? My NAS has four terabyte drives because that's how old it is now. Your drive has a fraction of the hours, like a third of the hours that are on all my other disks in here. So it's not not as scary, but it's scary it's, enough. It's the least scary four terabyte hard drive in your in your office lvm cache is a slow hotspot cache it's not meant to like if you ran a benchmark like a io meter or bonnie or somebody it may not show much difference because it's supposed to pick up things over days and weeks and months you know and fill the cache up it's not necessarily supposed to just it's not like your ram cache where everything goes in the ram cache i'm yeah. seeing myself do this tubby i'm i don't mean to be doing that well, as I say, it's uh, not everything gets you. A benchmark might not show how things are doing. So I've been trying to come up with ways to visualize how my cache is acting, and I've been watching it. I watch uh, disk statistics go by, and it's interesting because I'll copy data. Like we're recording an episode of uh, this live stream is getting recorded on my camera, the footage of me, right? And tonight I'll dump that off, and if I watch DSTAT, which is what's in that. Uh, window wherever it is if you watch dstat it'll just be all rights to the hard drive and almost nothing touching the ssd but then i'll yep. load that into davinci resolve and resolve scrubs through the whole video to generate the waveform on the audio graph right and you can watch it it'll be just like this graph over here this chart it'll be reading off of the disc and writing to the nvme at the same time on that second read and it'll Pretty much it's caching my entire, you know, this video I'm about to work on. That's impressive. I like I like the sound of that. It's, uh... Yep, so the idea of... is, I can't afford a big enough SSD. I don't know about you, but I can't fit all of the... I can't fit this year's videos, my Steam Get library, and all of my stuff on... I can't even fit it on a 2 terabyte SSD, and... Maybe I could squeeze in on a four terabyte, but it'd be close and it'd be expensive. Way expensive. 
Yeah, but for but for the price of a four terabyte SSD, I can buy a sixteen terabyte hard drive and a one terabyte NVMe, and I can cache what I need. Is the hope? Yes. And I hear Tubby that you're trying out uh, something called Primo Cache for Windows. Yeah. Is that yeah? Is that all true? your all your LVM cache talking had convinced me that I wanted to try something similar, and I I dug around, dug around. I did a few Google searches looking for recommendations and they all kind of seem to point back to this primo cache kind of acts the same the same way especially with regards to kind of what you were describing with some of the benchmarks you know i'm keeping i'm bringing a lot of the data that i've been keeping on my nas back onto my back onto my primary workstation i'm doing the same thing tubby and i wanted i wanted to do the same thing i wanted to use uh, a sliver of my nvme to to cache that, you know, the video, the video files that I wind up editing always grind my gears when I'm, they get, they get hung up. Um, so I was, I was hoping to do the same thing, but as I was seeding, you know, that, that big hard drive with the cache in front of it, you know, it was exactly what you're describing, writes to the disk, you know, no activity on the SSD, you know, and I was trying to, it's like, well, Maybe I can open it up and it'll open faster. And it seemed to be all read from the disk. But the the cache statistics say it's doing something. And, you know, I I did a couple benchmarks, you know, with like Crystal Disk Mark. And it was way fa- It was fast. I, I believe that it's working, but I, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to divine and, and see what it's doing. So it's functional. It seems to be working faster and nothing has blown up yet so i'm i'm kind of happy about that that last part's important it's good that nothing is blown up yeah now i've been paying attention as best i can i don't i'm not doing it i should be logging more of this and watching meters and things while it's happening but my concern has been i'm using one big drive for my steam library and my videos and the videos easily tonight we i'm going to collect from brian i'm going to collect his video we'll have the screen grab this is going to be about 120 gigabytes of files. It's more than a third of my cache is going to be and It's easy for this and the Create Invent podcast to just push everything that I care about cash. out of my yeah. cache. Yeah. So I'm thinking about splitting it up, Tubby, into one where my Steam library goes and one volume where my where all these video files just churn over and over again month after month after month. It's a little yeah, more I'm micromanaging do- than I was hoping to do. Because that's the well, other I'm, thing could, we could be doing, right? We could just be copying the things we need onto our SSD, and when we're done with them, manually pushing them off to an archive. But yeah, I don't want to do that. I'm micromanaging a little bit. You know, my my favorite Steam games are on the other half of my NVMe that the the operating system is sitting on. So I've yep. I've already decided I'm going to bypass the whole cache for the things that I'm excited about. But the the big applications are my my other games that I that I don't play as often, you know, they go off on, they go off onto my, my cache and hard drive. Yep. And I've been doing math, and the games are getting bigger. You know, they're up pushing. My biggest game I think is Borderlands Three is 136 gigabytes, and that's almost half my cache. Yep. But I I also think this is going to be interesting to watch. Like if you play a big game like Borderlands. You're, pro- you're generally progressing from the beginning to the end, and you don't spend much time in the beginning, and you know you you move through a lot of the game. I, you know, the first time you load a new area, it's going to fill into the cache, and yep. you know, and every time you play that area, it's going to be in your cache, and maybe the parts you never play will drift. Out. You know, on a macro level, I think well, we've got to put 130 gig of Borderlands in here, 100 gig of Red Dead Redemption, 20 gig of Team Fortress 2, but that's not how it works. It'll just no. be the pieces of each of those things that we use will go on the NVMe, which is neat. Well, and I might I might disagree with you there on Red Dead Redemption because I'm always walking back to the same the same <laughs> places. It's a you know I've that and uh, like Control, right? I'm yep. always stuck somewhere and walk walking through all of the things. Yep. But some of that I've been thinking about, like I say, at Team Fortress Two, I'm only going to be you know part of me says, well, we only play the same four maps all the time. But yep. all the TF2 maps have the same textures, right? It's not like, 
Yeah. I mean, there's, there's like a... two or three sets of textures is 99% of what gets loaded. But Borderlands has load screens, right? So you're constantly moving from one map to the next. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, it's it'll all be different. But we it's nice to know that we don't need the entire game. Like, I was thinking about... There was a game that shipped 10 years ago. It was like an 80-gig game, but 70-gig of it was WAV file. Uncompressed oh. audio for every language. Because wow. they didn't want to... Yeah, it was really dumb. But you would only cache the English wave file. Yep. Right? Yeah. So we wouldn't waste 80 gig on our SSD. We'd only waste 10 or whatever it works out to. But I'm working on this, Tubby. I'm going to move my... I'm going to separate my Steam games to one luck volume, my video files to another split. I don't think I'm going to split the cache. I'm going to use my old 512 gig SSD as the cache for the video. That should be fine. Yeah, that makes right. sense. And I've only tested a couple of games loading. And one of them that I tried, you know, I timed it and I said, well, that's exactly as fast as it was on my SSD. And this NVMe is 10 times faster. Is my cache a bottleneck? So I copied the whole game over to my NVMe, which could do two or three gigabytes a second and hundreds of thousands of IO ops. Fired the game up right off the NVMe. The load time was exactly the same. It wasn't... Oh, you've got a different bottleneck. Yeah, I've got it. Well, the game... Or, Whenever you load a game, it does math and, you know, yeah. stuff. It does stuff. Or, the, ga or the game is the bottleneck. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm very pleased. I'm so excited that I can spend 400 bucks to have 16 terabytes of fast storage instead of having to... God, I couldn't even afford that much SSD. You could buy no. a small used car Not yet. for that. Not yet. Someday. That's the neat thing about this, Tubby. I didn't even say it. This is a Band-Aid. This yeah. is just for us to be able to get by until SSDs get cheaper. Yeah. Maybe one more order I mean, of even, magnitude cheaper. Yeah, what? 8K video is not going to be... SSDs are getting are outpacing the growth of the biggest files right now. So Yep. And every time we make a leap, like when we went from 1080p to 4K, and when we're going from 4K to 8K, we've also gotten a new video codec that's yeah. twice as efficient as the last one. So. Yeah, 8K is four times as many pixels, and we're only making it half the size. So it's still going to double. Yeah. But it's not going to quadruple like, you know, like the numbers would make you think. So it's, I think we're going to do okay. In about five years, we'll be in great shape. We'll be able to retire our hard, our big hard drives again? I sure hope so. I sure. Well, I'm excited that I get to retire my RAID. Yeah. That's, I uh, won't need it anymore. Yeah, we should do, we should do an episode on that. We should not not tonight. No, but we'll we'll take no in the near in the near future. Because I'm getting our... that was one of my recent blogs, Tubby, in the last week. I talked about uh, I think I put that on butter what. Okay. About link in the video description. Link in the video description. You know, it's kind of like I'm running a race. I'm racing towards the finish line of getting rid of that raid. Except it's not a race because I don't have to get there. Where I am right now is fine. I don't yeah. gain anything by just spending six hundred dollars putting two fourteen terabyte hard drives in and doing the work. Right, I'll still be right where I am today, except with some extra space for for growth. But yeah, yeah. Now I'm at the part where we just get to leisure. Like I'm, people will be passing me now because, and they'll they'll hit the finish line before I do. I'm that guy celebrating early. <laughs> 